vectors are these high dimensional arrays. And so, you know, it's an array of floating point numbers uh, and it represents data, right? And its associated context. The way that we've added support for these vectors inside of MongoDB uh, is by basically enabling you to just store the vectors directly in your database. What is built on top of this is the secondary uh, structure, which is our secondary index that supports approximate nearest neighbor queries. And that's how you go about querying vectors, right? So this is done with what's called a graph index uh, by the name of HNSW. And it has a lot of properties that are really great for you know, low latency application use cases. So we can update this HNSW graph fast. Um, it allows you to trade off between query latency and accuracy of your results. Uh, but at the same time, one of the costs of an HNSW graph is that it does all need to be in memory for it to be efficient when it comes to querying. Uh, and that's really what we're here to talk about today. How do we reduce the memory requirements of this graph to make it dramatically cheaper to serve use cases using vector search? And the way that we're solving for this is with quantization, a technique for reducing representation. One way to think about reducing representation is basically just some sort of lossy compression. And so for a picture of a dog, an example of a lossy compression would be grayscale, right? And so this is basically taking three 8-bit values and reducing them down and thereby condensing the representation of this image by a third. And so we get a 3x reduction in the cost to store this image. This is the concept of quantization. The thing that we want to do is make these embedding vectors still group similar data together, but we want to do so using less memory and using uh, less time. What we've done is we've added a new uh, type to BSON via our, our bin data type and what is now subtype 8 that allows you to represent vectors uh, very efficiently inside of the database. And so we've been talking a lot about how we're reducing the cost on memory, which we are. What this is reducing the cost on, though, is storage. And the other thing that we're doing is the e efficient index representation. So ensuring that when you use this reduced type inside of the database, we use a reduced representation inside of the index. And that's how we are able to take up so much less memory or RAM when it comes to loading the index you know, uh, into memory. And so this is you know, us having the minimum representation inside of the index. And these are kind of the two pieces of the new feature, which is the efficient storage and ingestion of these quantized vectors. The other new feature that I want to talk about, uh, or new kind of group of features, is what we're calling automatic quantization in Atlas. This leads to some dramatic improvements, right? So you use 75% less RAM for your indexes when you use int8 or scalar quantization. You maintain 99% of the accuracy that you had with your full fidelity float32 vectors. And in fact, we actually see an increase in performance because the reduced representation means we're moving less data around. So you actually see even better performance than you saw to begin with. And so these improvements are dramatic and really impressive on their own. But actually where it gets kind of crazy is when you now enter the realm of binary quantization. And binary quantization is where we're now doing rescoring as well. With this approach, we see that you get to reduce the amount of memory that you need in order to support these indexes by 96%, so a massive reduction in memory. You maintain 95% accuracy, right? Uh, and finally, you again are seeing even better than the performance that you were seeing before. So just massive gains across the board uh, and really just kind of a strong story in every dimension.